Today we're talking to St Albans City manager Ian Anderson at Bullpit Lane where the Saints have gone down to a 5-0 National League South defeat to strugglers Hungerford Town. Results bad enough here and we'll get onto that in a second. I thought the first half was open, both sides were attacking and Hungerford though for a side in their position I thought they really took the game for us and had we gone in just 2-0 down as it looked like a few seconds before the break it would have flattered us. Um, yeah I think um I think you said it there, the game was flowing, it was too open from where we was, where we were concerned, we were too expansive today, it was, uh, it was a performance which I didn't expect, um, but we didn't get to grips with their, their, their movement, their pace, their hunger, the whole game and before we knew where we was we were 2-0 down as you say and then the third goal probably kills it just before half time. I felt we had a good 15-20 minutes to start the second half, but unfortunately we've given, we've given a really good fifth goal away and it then you know, it makes it look like a really poor result, which in the end it was, but I didn't think we were really set today to, to come to a side that I watched last week at Chelmsford and we were very unfortunate to come away with a, with a defeat, let alone a 4-1 defeat, so you know, we have, to, we have to look at the information that people have taken on board today. And, They've listened to what we've said, but we never really got to grips with them. I didn't think for the first, sort of, first couple of minutes, even though the first sort of 15, 20 minutes, we've got three really good opportunities. We're standing in the wind here, you're getting a bit blown about. And talking about that wind, because uh, the match was in doubt for much of the week. It's supposed to be underwater, but we can't blame the pitch, can we? It held up well. No, you can't blame anything, can you? It just hasn't been good enough. We've not defended correctly. And that's a shame because we've defended really well over the last few weeks. We've looked really solid, we look really strong, and uh, today we're all over the place. I felt, I felt as a back four, we got pulled all over the place. Midfield never really got to grips with their midfield players. We never went with runners early on. Um, and I think the front three, even though they, they did okay going forward, it was the defensive side of it that we needed to, to probably get them a little bit tucked in a little bit more and uh, obviously just try and help in terms of the defensive side of it. But the game was, as I said, was too, was too wide, too, open, too too long in terms of where we was. We were defending too deep. We never squeezed the game on. We never got our midfield squeezed on. And as I say, we never really worked their back four apart from maybe three or four occasions. You mentioned the defence getting pulled around. Uh, Michael Clark and Lewis Knight, we do pick up the occasional booking. I think you had no option yet, but to uh, substitute them, they looked in danger of being sent off. Well, I think they got a bit frustrated and a bit broad with the referee in the first half, and then Michael obviously got pulled over, so I felt it was only right that we didn't risk getting a red card from that side of it. And then, obviously, Lewis, see you later, uh, Lewis got caught, um, which was a silly tackle from behind. Again, he sort of lost his head again. I think the game was frustrating a lot of the players today, which was disappointing um, because we need to be we need to be more professional than that in terms of not getting involved with the referee, not losing our head. A couple of decisions I felt did go against us, but we have to learn that sometimes and we have to get on with it. Um, but you know, we were fortunate now on one or two of the challenges that the other referees might have just brandished a red card. So once Lewis did what he did, he had to come off and we lost that shape totally by then. Um, and it was very, very disappointing because as I say, we, we huffed and puffed and had a couple of good moves, but I felt overall there was, there was no strength, pace, power or anything that we've shown over the last few weeks today. Whether the extra time and the minutes on, on Wednesday took a lot out of the players, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't want to make excuses like that. I just think on the day they were better than us. I think we were poor. I think, as I say, our preparation was poor, our shape was poor, uh, and it was just a really bad day at the office. It's strange to see our defence pulled around in such a fashion. Of course, you had problems for the game at the other end of the pitch as well. Sam Merson possibly still cannot play, and David Moyo was well, in. Well, hopefully, I mean, again, it's it's. It's left us a little bit weak in them, and we knew that. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we've, we have to abide by what the physio and the doctors have told us. So, hopefully, Sam should be now okay to start joining in in terms of um, any sort of contact. Um, and David, we just got to wait and see how, he, how his knee reacts now over the next sort of seven days before we can make a decision on him playing. But again, you know, I felt. The front three, to be fair, I thought we could cause them some problems in terms of of their pace, their movement, and, and the way we played. And at times we did cause them some 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 problems. I mean, Zane was coming in short, and then with two wide men, but as I, I just didn't think there was enough in terms of of us penetrating. And when we did get in good areas and we put balls in the box, there wasn't enough bodies arriving in the box, so it didn't help. And I think David Moyo's led the line unbelievable over the last few weeks. You know, he he, he literally has played every minute of every game over the last sort of ten. 
10, 10 weeks and he's played a lot of games. Sam obviously was doing really well before he picked up his injury. So it is a blow from that side of it, but I, you know, I don't want to use it as an excuse, David. I just felt today we wasn't good enough all over the park. I think defensively, as I said, it, you know, we, we were really, really poor. Um, I didn't think a back four played any sort of shape or got to grips with their movement and, and the runners. But the back four have also got to take responsibility because they've got to be speaking to the midfield players about runners that was coming at them. And, and that midfield let too many runners run off them today. Uh, and that caused us problems, caused the back four problems. Um, and then, you know, Dean's kept us in it with two or three really good saves. And then, you know, I felt we just let ourselves down at 3-0. We're still trying to chase the game. And that's what we said there. He doesn't have to throw the ball out to Cal. Cal's caught on his heels. And before we know, we're 4-0 down. And then it was just literally just trying to keep the score down to as much as we can because they looked like they were going to score every time they went through against us. But we just couldn't get to grips with them. Full credit to them. You know, you have to question why they're second from bottom. You have to question why. They're, they're where they are because you know they've turned up today. You know they need to turn up every single week, and if they play like that, then they'll, they'll be safe by the end of the season. I fully agree with you, and I think they deserve a lot of praise for the way they play today. As for us, uh, it's embarrassing, and it's damaged our promotion hopes, of course, playoff hopes. But we're still only three points out that side the playoff places. Plenty of time still to turn it around, but we won't do it with performances like that, obviously. No, we won't. Um, but you know, as we said before, you know, Ben Ben's come through. Ben has come through 20 minutes late on today and he's making good progress as I say you know Sam can now get in contact after this weekend which is good uh, we've got to try and get David Moyo back which is good um, and you know we've just got to make sure that we, we, we get back some, to some shape and, and organisation again and, and make sure that the games aren't too too spread out too too open um, you know we can't play like that especially away from home you know, we didn't play like that at Hampton and Richmond, you know, even in the games against True and that we wasn't so expansive. But as I say, you know, we, we can look at the problems we've had today. And for me, over the last 10 weeks, since the beginning of December, we've had a really good spell for three months. And, and the players have been, been magnificent for, for me and the club. And, you know, it's difficult for me to, to come from today because it is a bad day at the office. And, and, you know, including myself and the players, we haven't performed today, which is disappointing. Um, but that's probably the worst it's been since I've probably been here in terms of the three years I've nearly been here but you know, I'm not going to come for any of the players at the moment they've, they've run through brick walls for, over the last sort of three months we've put some really good performances together we've had some real good battles with a lot of teams you know we've got to the county Fog cup final now which is something that we've all wanted to do um, but I just don't think we planned and prepared properly today to play to play Hungerford in terms of our preparation and uh, as I say I have to take full responsibility of that because I'm the one that's got to motivate them in that changing room Glenn has to motivate them when he brings them out here to get them ready for the game uh, and we have to be prepared to, to battle and win every single tackle and every single challenge to win a game of football I don't think we were ready to win every challenge and every single challenge today that happened I felt we were second best most of the time uh, and, and as I say Hungerford deserved it I felt they were better than us on the day they wanted it more than us they were first to every ball first to every second ball uh, and they got the rim as they deserved and, and as I say 5-0 didn't flatter them at all I think they deserved that at the end of the day Next Saturday away to Willstone a side that has turned around its fortunes maybe Hunkford will now as well uh, and we've got to go there and stop him uh, from marching on and get ourselves back in a good position Yeah exactly um, and that's, that's a good thing about you know, the league we've still got 13 games to go and you mentioned it there you're still only 3 points outside it as I've said, I say it all along if somebody says you're going to be 3 points from the playoffs with 13 games to go I'd snap your hands off but you know, if we perform like we've performed today, then you know we've got no chance of getting in the playoffs. So we have to, first and all, take stock of where we are. We have to get the injured players back as quickly as we can. You know, we've been doing it now for sort of six weeks since Christmas, so we have to get them back. Um, we have to work on our shape again this week and organisation, and we have to make sure that we defend correctly as a team. And that's all over the park. That's from the front men back through to the back four. Um, we've got to get back to giving Dean some protection because he didn't get any protection from us today and we've been doing that over the last few weeks so you know they're all the things we have to work on on Tuesday and Thursday and then we've got to go and take it to to Willstone on Saturday you know as I say we've got to try and get back fit we've got to get our shape back in there um, and we've got to look how how well we work when we've got the ball and how well we work when we, work when we haven't got the ball because I didn't think we worked well enough today when we have never had the ball but you know, we've lost 11 games this year, which is probably a lot for any team to get in there. But the one thing we have done this year, we haven't had too many draws. So, you know, we've got to make sure we keep winning games. We're going to have losses on the way. We know that, you know, it's, it's football. Um, and, and I've said it all the season. I'm not, I'm not just making it up now. We, we've been very inconsistent this year. 
But when we have had good spells, we're good. And when we've had our bad spell, you know, we haven't been the, haven't been the best. So we're going to make sure we get on back onto the good spells. We're going to make sure, as I say, we plan, prepare properly, and we carry out all the instructions that are done. Because if we do that, you know, we ain't a bad side. We can cause a lot of teams in this league a few problems. We've already shown that with some of our performances against some of the top teams. But you know, we have to we have to first and foremost respect the teams in the lower regions, and they're fighting for their lives. And the one thing they did today, they fought, fought more than us. Thanks so much, Ian. Appreciate it, particularly when you come out on a day like this. Thank you. Not one of our best days. So there we are. Saints next in action next Saturday. That's the 16th of February. We're away to Wheelstone in National League South, and kickoff at Grosvenor Vale is at 3 p.m. <laughs>